Hi there. In the following video, I'm going to show you the second sorting algorithm you need to know and be able to reproduce in your decision one and maths exam. So, um, I've shown you already the bubble sort, and in this particular video, I'm going to show you the shuttle sort. Again, uh, a typical example, we're sorting 7, 5, 2, 4, 10, 1, 6 and 3 in ascending order using this algorithm. Okay, as before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the algorithm by an example, show you how it's working slowly and how to count the various things you're interested in. And then I'm going to show you how you would actually write this in the exam and how you would count things accurately in the exam. Okay, the shuttle sort algorithm. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my numbers in a vertical line down the page. So I'm going to, these are the numbers I'm trying to make in ascending order. And I'm going to call these my originals. Okay, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy them for these purposes here, just to show you how the algorithm works. Obviously, you can't uh, do this in the exam necessarily. And then we're going to complete pass one. Okay, pass one says, on the first pass, compare the first and second items and swap if you need to. So I'm going to put a line under the second one so I show, uh, so I know what I'm going to compare from. Now, compare the 7 and the 5. Do I need to swap? Yes, I do, because 5 is smaller than 7, so make the swap. And you're done on the first pass. OK, I'm going to copy these again for the purposes of the second pass. Let's have a go at the second pass now. OK, pass 2. Now, on the second pass, you compare the second and third items and swap if necessary. If you do a swap, then you compare the first and second. The implication being, if you don't do a swap, you stop there. So I'm going to start off comparing the third and the second. Uh, I compare them. Do I need a swap? Yes, I do, because two is smaller than seven. Now that I've done a swap, I have to compare the, the new second and the first. Compare them. Do I need a swap? Yes, I do. Make that swap. And you're done on your second pass. OK, let's go for the third pass. OK, here are the numbers for the third pass. And as you'd expect, I'm going to start by comparing the third and the fourth. Look at them. Do I need to swap? Well, yes, I do in this case. I need to make a swap because four is smaller than seven. Because I've swapped, I need to compare above. Uh, look at these. Do I need to make a swap? Yes, I do. And go on and swap them. Again, because I've swapped, I need to see if I need to make a swap. But in this case, 2 is smaller than 4, so I don't. So that is my pass 3 completed. OK, got to keep going. Let's keep this up. Let's go for pass 4 now. Obviously, in pass 4, we're going to start off with a comparison between the 4th and the 5th. Now, in this case, I do not uh, need to make a swap because 10 is bigger than 7. Now that I've made that comparison and I know I don't need to swap, the algorithm tells me I don't need to compare with the ones above because the algorithm has made the ones above in order uh, and so that they are certainly um, less than 7. So because I've made the first comparison, I stop here and pass 4 is done. Okay, let's have a look at pass five. Obviously, with pass five, we're going to start off by comparing the fifth and the sixth. Do I need to make a swap? Yes, I do. So do it. Now that I've made a swap, I need a new comparison. Compare the one and the seven. And again, I'm afraid I'm going to need to make a swap. I've made a swap, so do another comparison. And I'm going to have to swap the one and the five here. Again, compare. 4 and the 1 here, and obviously I'm going to have to do a swap, so swap over. And lastly, compare the 1 and the 2, and again, I'm going to need to do a swap, and that is pass 5 completed. OK, keep going. Let's go for pass 6 now. Start off in pass 6 by comparing the 6 and the 7th numbers. Need a swap, so do it. Again, 
Uh, now the, the six and the seven need a swap, so do it. The five and the six don't need a swap, so stop there. And that's pass six completed. Okay, and then just to finish off, we've got to do the seventh pass. In the seventh pass, we start off by comparing um, the eighth and the seventh and the eighth. Do we need a swap? Yes, we do. Make that swap again. Going to have to do a swap. Going to have to do a swap. Going to have to do a swap. And going to have to do another swap. At that point, need to make one more comparison, but no swap needed, so stop there. Okay, now, we've done our uh, shuttle sort algorithm. Let's just see if we can count the things we're interested in counting. Let's count. I'm just going to move all this. I'm going to move all this up just a little bit here. Move it up here. Now, let's count how many comparisons we made and how many swaps we had to make. Well, it turns out that swaps are easier to count than comparisons. So, how do you count a swap? Well, you look at your, uh, on pass one, you look at the list before, the original list, and you see how much the second number moved up. It moved up one place to here. So we must have done one swap. Now you look at the second pass. You look at um, where did the third number here, a 2, end up at in the end of pass 2? Well, it moved up two places, so there must have been two swaps. Again, you look at uh, in the third pass, where did this 4 end up? Well, it moved up two places, so there must have been two swaps. Where did this 10 end up? Well, it didn't move at all, so there must have been no swaps. Where did this one uh, end up? Well, it moved up one, two, three, uh, four, and five. So there must have been five swaps. This six moved up one, two places, so there were two swaps. And this three moved one, two, three, four, and five. So there must have been five swaps. Now, they're the swaps. In total, we've got one and two is three. Add uh, two is five. Add zero is five. Add 5 is 10, add 2 is 12, add 5 is 17 swaps. In total, how do we count uh, how many comparisons we made? Well, if you just have a look at the first example, in order to make that one swap, we had to have one comparison. So we had one comparison there. It turns out, as a, it's an easy and quick way of counting, if the pass number and the swap number are the same, then that same number is the number of comparisons. Whereas if the pass number, for example here, is bigger than the swap number, then the comparisons was one more than the swap. So let's go through this. The pass here is 2, the swap is 2, so the comparisons are also 2. But the pass here is 3, which is one more than the swap number, so there must have been uh, three comparisons. Add one to the swap number. Here there were the fourth pass, no swaps, so we must have had one comparison. After all, we had to compare that first number uh, in order to see whether we had to do anything in that pass. Pass 5, five swaps, there must have been five comparisons. Pass 6, there were only two swaps. So add one to the number of swaps, there must have been three comparisons. And past seven, there are five swaps, so you need to add one to the number of comparisons, so there were six comparisons. In total, adding these up, one and two is three, add three is six, add one is seven, add five is 12, add three is 15, add six is 21 comparisons, and uh, 17 swaps. Okay, now I want to perform this algorithm for you, how I would write it in an exam. Because obviously you can't just copy and paste numbers and move them around on the page without uh, do, rubbing things out and making it messy. So let's have a go at the shuttle sort algorithm one last time. Uh, but this time um, I'm going to have... Um,
I'm not going to uh, copy and paste it. So let's have a go. The first thing I'm going to do, that's my original list, so I'm going to call it O. I'm going to start off by comparing the second and first in my first pass. So pass one, put a little line on it there, and compare these and swap if necessary. And I do need to make a swap. Just going to put my line there to tell me what I ended up comparing down to. Okay, pass two. Here, I'm going to compare my two and my seven. I need to make a swap. So the seven must go down. Imagine the two here, compare it with the five. It needs to go up and the five must go down here. Again, write the numbers underneath uh, as they were before. Let's go to pass three. I'm going to start off here. Compare the four and the seven. You can start quickly doing this by seeing the four is going to have to go up to the second position to be in the right space. And the five and the seven will have to move down one. Your ten, your one, your six and your three will be underneath. Pass four, starting here. The 10 will not move anywhere, so you should keep it exactly as it is because it is not smaller than anything above it. And you write your numbers below that 10 as you haven't reached them yet in the algorithm. Pass five, I'm going to start here at the one. You can see that's going to be pushed up to this point here, and everything else is going to be pushed down one underneath and leave your remainders underneath. And then let's look at pass six then. We'll go to the sixth pass. Well, obviously we're gonna be comparing um, the sixth and the seventh number. Now this six is gonna end up coming up to this point here. The seven and the 10 will be pushed down and the three will stay where it is. The five, four, two, one, stay where they are. And lastly, pass seven, this three, is going to end up being pushed up to this position with the 1 and 2 above it. Um, and then you've got your 4, 5, 6, 7 and 10. And we're done. Let's just check we can count as quickly as we did before. Let's count the comparisons and the swaps. The swaps here was how far this second number got pushed up. It got pushed up one place, so one swap. Um, here, uh, how much did this third number get pushed up, uh, well it got pushed up two, so there were two swaps. How much did this number get pushed up? Again two, so two swaps. This number, none. This number, one, two, three, four, five, got pushed up five. This number, one, two, and this number, one, two, three, four, and five. So there were five swaps. Now remember, if the pass number and the swap number are the same, then that is the same number as comparisons. So the comparison there would be one, the comparison there would be two, um, the comparison there would be five, and in all other cases, add one to the swap number when it's less than the pass number. So add one here, add one here, add one here, and add one here. Total them up, and again, you should get the total number of swaps is three, and two is five, and five is 10, and 7 is 17, and the number of comparisons is 3 and 3, 6 and 1, 7 and 5, 12 and 3, 15 and 6, 21. And hence, we have worked out the shuttle sort algorithm and sorted those numbers in ascending order. Okay, to finish, two questions for you to do yourself. Um, I've got a table format laid out for you. I would encourage you to count the comparisons and swaps for each pass and in total at the end. You can use the table or you can write it as I've just done it in this example as you would have to in an exam. Turn to the next slide and then pause the video. After 10 seconds I'll show you the answers. Off you go. Pause. And the answers to these two questions are as follows. And it, just to check you got it right, you can check your comparisons as you go along, your exchanges or your swaps. Swaps mean exchanges here, in case you're wondering. And um, in total, for the first one, I've got 44 comparisons, 37 swaps. And for the second, 32 comparisons, 
and 25 swaps. I hope you found the following useful in your revision for the shuttle sort algorithm. Thank you.